All right. All right. All right. Okay. Bert, I don't believe it, that we're finally after, you know, the last time was 1982, Best Little Whorehouse uh -huh. in Austin, Texas. I remember very well. Yeah, and it's wonderful to see you again. Me too. I've missed you. Thank I really you. have missed talking you. with you. Thank you very much. And, uh, and, and so now you, you have done a number of movies in between Whorehouse. Why did you finally decide, okay, let's go for it, let's talk to him? Oh, I, I think probably uh, in my own uh, maturing, maybe I thought you people matured too. You know, remember that Mark Twain saying about how, how shocked you were, how much your father learned between the time you were 16 and 21. <laughs> 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 it was a late, it was a late bloomer for me. <laughs> uh, are you saying that you were kind of uh, ticked off with this f for a while? Well, I don't. I'm not saying you, but I think there was a time when I, there was just too much of me all over the papers. And, not, uh, and most of it wasn't real swell, and so I just decided to lay back for a while. And uh, so now you, uh, you think everything's going to be better? Well, I hope that the work will be is better. So it's hard to, it's, when, they li when they like the work, uh, hopefully they'll concentrate on the work more, not uh, concentrate on me so much. The film is a hoot, Bert. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I enjoyed it a lot, and I enjoyed seeing you do this kind of role again because nobody does it better. Thank you, Mommy. You know one thing that you do that I just love, and I don't know anybody who does it any better, you do takes better than anybody. You know when you, sorry, see I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wonder, is this just a kind of natural thing with you, or did you study somebody who does that well? No, I didn't. Uh studying anybody. I, I think it came from the theater. I've done a lot of theater. And uh, I, I once, uh, one time I was on the stage and, and an actress was in trouble, couldn't get on the stage, and so we had to sort of fill in. And we just did, and everything went wrong. I, as I remember the set fell down, and uh, but just everything. And finally I just looked at the audience and, you know, to, and broke what they call broke the wall. and. Uh, it was a, there was an enormous uh, uh, affection from them, like, you know, we understand you've got all kinds of problems and we're with you, you know. And uh, nobody does that in film. They don't want to break that wall. And I, I've done it a few times. I did it in Smoking the Bandit. It was the first time I really actually looked right into the camera. You can't do it in, in this kind of comedy, but what you can do is look between the actor and the camera. Right in there, there's a little spot you can take, and you can also do takes on other actors. The, the people that did it the best, of course, were Laurel and Hardy. I mean, and that came from, in their book, uh, Stan Laurel said that, that because when they were in vaudeville, they heard the audience laughter. And when, in film, they, they couldn't hear it and it drove them crazy, so they didn't know when to, to stop long enough. To let, so they went to a, a screening and they timed the laughs. And, and so this piece of business that uh, Oliver did, uh, came out of Stan saying, do something while, while we give the, the time to laugh. <laughs> and then finally he, he would just turn and just do a take, you know. Um, but their masters, and Gleason was one of the greats at a take, I mean, the best, I think. Um, I don't come anywhere near them. Cary Grant was pretty good, too. You do one, the first time you see the Christopher Reeve character, mm -hmm. you do a great one. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he is so gorgeous and so tall and, and so swell looking that when she, because uh, so, she tells me that she wants me to meet her new husband or a new husband to be. And of course, you always picture in your mind that they're marrying Arnold Stang. No offense to Arnold Stang. <laughs> <laughs> but you hope that it's going to be some guy who's kind of small and has a funny voice and not too attractive. And, and you glance over, and there's this fellow who looks perfect, you know. So you, you can do a take then. In this movie, Switching Channels, you run uh, like a CNN, it's like mm -hmm. cable network news. And uh, it made me wonder that if Burt Reynolds ran a network, or if Burt Reynolds was a publisher, what kind of a policy would you have about celebrity profiles? What, what you would let them do and not do? The reporters, I mean. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't say that everything is fair. Uh, I mean, you can't go after everybody in the tenacity that they do. I, I think that 
there are certain celebrities that sort of, um, in, in their attitude, make them fair game. I mean, Sean Penn almost uh, cries out for you to, to, uh, to be a little rough on him, you know. Um, and that's just because he's young, you know. I think he's, he's going to get... Uh, He's going to get hurt enough that he's going to get pulled back further and further and further. And unfortunately, the only way that uh, you ever get past that is that you, it takes time, you know. The, the, you know you're forgiven after a certain number of years. If you're still around, and, and, uh, some nice comes back, you know. But uh, his anger so early, is, is, it's hard to forgive him for that. I'm talking about what they think, whoever they are. Um, if someone is as, as, as gracious and nice as Jack Lemmon has been over the years, the press just has a kind of stand back attitude towards him that's quite astounding to see when he comes in a room and nobody quite runs over people. I found that now, I was uh, with Lonnie the other night, the first time we'd been gone through the gauntlet of photographers in, in a few years and, and we, we went to something for the Cancer Society. and. Uh, immediately, then they've gotten more rude as each year goes by, now to the point where they're, they're like a bunch of animals climbing over each other. But when you say, hold it, they stop, you know. And you say, look, just take a picture, we'll pose for a picture, we'll be very nice, and then we're going to go in. And they're very nice. But if you get angry with them in, a, in an unreasonable way, and, and try, and also if you try to be nice to them, that's a big mistake because they don't understand that. They understand, hold it, they understand it. Uh, but uh, then they can be rather civilized. But it, 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 because they've given money, cash money, to people for a picture, and there's no rules, it's just whoever gives it in quickest and fastest and best, they're like crazy people, you know. And, and they get a lot of money for, for pictures. So it's, it's gotten unruly and crazy. And in a strange way, there's an analogy to reporters now, to those paparazzi. They're the quickest guy with a story and the, the fastest. I mean, what's happening right now with the, the, a certain preacher um, this morning, I mean, the, the race to get that story and the race to make it this, as hot and, you know, everything. I mean, uh, today, we were talking about this the other night. I was at, a, at someone's house. you mind if I talk about this? Please. I was at Mel Torme's house, and at, at the house was Eddie Dimitri, who was in during the time of the communist thing. And somebody said, you know, today, if you make a mistake, one mistake, politically, you're finished. You're finished. If you, whether it's sexual misbehavior or even saying there's missiles in Cuba, if you're wrong, you know, it could be disastrous for you if you're wrong. There were no photographs of Roosevelt being carried to his wheelchair. If there was a president today who was paralyzed. There would be pictures of him being carried off the John. You know? I mean, there would be the most disgusting pictures we could think of. There was a kind of reverence to that office that doesn't exist anymore. There shouldn't be that kind of reverence for actors, but I think there should be some kind of, of policy that uh, has some dignity to it, you know? Very quickly, Bert, I'm sitting here looking at you, and you look marvelous and Thank I you. don't say that to be patronizing because I like many people we were quite worried when you had gotten so thin and everything mm -hmm. so now uh, that you're looking marvelous again is that kind of putting aside all that garbage about well I hope so I mean I try to get the weights every day and, and get big and uh, enough so that someone can will say geez you're really big you know I weigh 196 <laughs> pounds I'm hoping that the Rams will say something um, the, to put it all at rest, and also the fact that I've been working so hard, you know. But again, you know, Bobby, when the work is good, uh, that stuff is sort of pushed in the background. When the work's not good, they try to figure out something else to talk about. Well, the work is good. Again, I enjoyed the film very much. You. You're and such a nice lady. It's yeah. just great to see you again. Take Thank care. You. I will. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Really good to see you. Thanks.